Welcome to another He Said, She Said, and this is your host, Ronald Johnson, and what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. If you have a career, if you're a relationship, if you're going through transition, this is where I can help you. I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life because you have a right to live the best life you can today, right now, at this moment. I'm here with Denise Lewis. Denise, take it away. Thanks, Ron. Hi, I'm Denise Lewis, and I have a company called GrandSlamCoaching.com, and I am a coach that is performance-based. So if your performance is on the athletic field, the boardroom, the classroom, the courtroom, I can help you show up and be the best you that you can be in every aspect of your life. I've walked in your cleats. I've been in your classroom. I've been in your courtroom. I'm here to help you make the most of every single day so that every day is a Grand Slam day. Can't forget that. <laughs> and, I, and the reason why I do that is that I like the Grand Slam. And first thing I think about is those that are older to remember is the dirt between uh, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. Those were the things. Like stands are being filled with people because they just want to catch that ball. I think someone caught the 73rd, 75th, you know, something like that. It's with a crap ton of money, I guess, at that point, something like that. So yes. I wish I but, it was, but it was a fan who reached over the edge and interfered with play. Oh, interesting. Okay. So as, the, so as whatever field it was at, as the guy was going back to catch it, there was a fan who reached over and interfered with the, so it didn't count for a home run. Um, I can't remember which way, whether it counted for a home run or didn't, but the fan got in and it was just like, oh, you know, just be, don't be stupid. It's not about you. It's about the baseball player. So. <laughs> You know, that was just me. You know what? You know what? The, the, that, that's good history because I don't, I don't remember that. All I remember is Sammy Sosa, no, Mark Wright hit those home runs at the park. And that's mm -hmm. why we're here with Grand Slam Lewis and RJ. And yeah. today's topic is going to be about um, hobbies. What's your favorite hobby? And the reason why I want to bring up hobbies is there's something someone likes to do out there that provide, provides them a lot of happiness. It can be hiking, it can be dancing, it can be. Uh, traveling, it can be um, okay. my birthday party, cooking. I mean, there are infinite amount of things that make an individual happy. And more importantly, are we interested in doing our own hobbies? Is it something as a kid that you used to love doing, but you don't do it now because, quote unquote, you don't have the time? So what's that? So Denise, I want you to go first. What's your favorite hobby? Oh my gosh. Well, I used to have, I used to have a lot more than I do now. And I will say that, you know, Taekwondo is a hobby that was uh, just really empowering and it was fun and I got to beat the daylights out of people <laughs> and, and dummies <laughs> the poor teenage kids here were these teenage boys who were all black belts and they were big and burly they're like oh we get to bag hold the bag for Miss Lewis and then after a couple of sessions it was like oh no we have to hold the bag for Miss Lewis <laughs> <laughs> because what they didn't know was that I played soccer for eight years in high school and college and they were so, so that was a big hobby, but you know, a few too many injuries. So I've had to retire from that. Um, cooking is still a really good, uh, big hobby for me. I like to cook all the time and, uh, I also enjoy hiking. So I take the dog for a walk. We go five to 10 Ks every morning, which is awesome. And, uh, I like to do, there's a company it's called board and brush and you go and you have these wood things and you paint, sand them, paint them, stain them. And you create stuff. And it's just kind of okay. fun to get my little artsy bit out, you know, my, my crafty side out. And because all mm -hmm. it is is following directions. If I can follow directions, I can make anything you want me to make. I like that. So would you say you're the person who likes to work with your hand or work with your mind? Which one is it? Uh, it's kind of both. Because it depends. Like, when you're making something crafty, mm -hmm. um, it's really fun because when you have to follow directions, because if you show me how to, well, hang on. Why don't you show us? I have something. Hang on a minute. <laughs> well, I'm just keep talking here. Well, while Denise goes and gets her favorite thing to show us, um, the reason why we're going to bring up hobbies is it's more important in these times to find the stuff that makes us happy and enjoy that. By doing things that make you eternally happy, it gives you more energy for your friends, for your family, be it creative or even for your job. If you're doing less of what makes you happy, it means that you just don't energy left for yourself at the end of the day. It's an energy to do the things you have to do, right? So self-care is very important. Gratitude is important. 
but the things that make you happy is up most important. And that's what we're discussing today is what, how do we turn to what we can't find external happiness? Look at that. She okay. has it ready to go. We've got a couple of things. Oh, and by the way, these are my, our fan cutouts of my son and I from oh, I nice from Oracle Park. We finally got them the other day because as you can see from our list, they had my address as a 44 Willie Mays Plaza, which is the ballpark. <laughs> Anyway, it was kind of long ago. But <laughs> no, no one, no one GPS that. That's for sure. Exactly. So, um, it, it, there were a couple of things. There was a, a company called Canvas and Cabernet, which is, I think, now out of business. But now they have, um, they they have other companies. Uh, something painting. They're painting, and it, it's it's kind of paint by numbers. But you, they teach you what to do step by step. So that was fun for a while. And alcohol is included, which is really a lot of fun with the that's girls. That's great. So, so I have. This one, which was supposed to be, I'm trying to hold it so the light's not on it. It was supposed to be a moon and a single tree, like just a silhouette, right? Well, uh -huh. I like to put my own spin on it. And I was kind of feeling after I did the swirly bits, I, I felt like I was underwater with my scuba gear, lying on a rock. And I kind of went this way and I kind of made an angry kelp field. Ooh, interesting. Around the sun. So that was kind of fun. I, I tried to do a turtle in the corner and like the shadow of a turtle or a shark. It just wasn't working yeah. out. So that didn't happen. So, and then- when um, I see that painting right there. It's like, uh, I see like sunlight at the top. So something's reaching towards the sunlight. It's like something's growing towards the top. And grabbing like the to, sunlight because that's the energy yeah. and that's the warmth. See, you put another spin on it. Love it. Yeah. This one was supposed to be Paris at night. So we have the lights and we have the city and we have the, you know, the road and the wet stuff. And up on the top here, I don't know if you can see this because my camera's not at the right angle. See that little gray here? Yep, I see it. Okay. It was supposed to be the Eiffel Tower in this corner. I could not make the Eiffel Tower work. So I had some, I had some leftover gray. So I put the red, I put that and I put the gray. And she came, the teacher came over and said, what's going on? Where's the Eiffel Tower? And I said, Oh no, this is a different section of the city and there was a factory fire. That's what's supposed to be honest. Oh man, something must be on fire there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a factory fire. So <laughs> we're giggling about that. This one's kind of fun. Guitar. Like, yes, like it, a is, it is a guitar. Yes. But it's also the palm trees and the sun and the marsh and three people sitting on a bench. Interesting. I like that. Good view. But then you have to that. turn it that way, it's a guitar. And then guitar. this one is kind of fun. We had um, pumpkins for fall. Okay. I love that. Yeah. And I have a couple others, but they aren't as nice as this. So so hang on. You keep talking about your hobbies. I'll go get some board and brush stuff because I don't know where the devil I put them, but hang go on. Go get that. All right. Hang on. So why would we need to come back again? Because I like the stuff. So cool. It reminds me of kind of like paint night. But I never done paint night, but that seems very cool because you can be inventive what comes up in your mind that day. Um, what's good about painting is it allows you your energy and your creativity just to flow. Whatever comes up, like the first one I said, guitar, and actually it's palm trees and people look at the sunset. So who knows? So I'll talk about my hobby. So those that never listen to my podcast and don't know me, uh, my favorite hobby is RC cars and fish tanks. As you can see, let me see. Can you zoom in? I got a little bit of fish in the back there. I call him consciousness. So it's a pretty baited fish. I want a long tail and it always are males. Um, so consciousness is his name. That's what I call him because I believe we have a good, great human consciousness. So I love fish tanks. That's not my end all and be all. Um, my biggest fish tank will be 500, uh, 280 to 350 gallon fish tank that I will have, that will be eventually get. But because all the dynamics have that big of a fish tank, I'm much harder to get. So it's not like you buy the fish tank, you buy uh, the stuff. First of all, you got to figure out if you're going to have a live reef tank. You got to figure out if you got fish only. It will be fresh water, it will be aquaponics, what kind of filtration you're going to have, how long it's going to be there, put the water in, the list can go on. So you all actually start backwards. What do you want to have or what do you want for the future? Because once you fill a 350 gallon, 500 gallon fish tank, trust me, you don't want to take it all apart. It's, it's too much. But one hobby I'm into right now is radio remote control RC cars. I'm not talking about the one that you buy at Tours R Us or the one you see maybe at a Best Buy or Amazon. You know, they're about $150. You know, I'm talking about 
the ones that come in three different versions. The first version is gas, which you actually put gasoline, like you would in a car, into a remote control car. They're about, uh, I guess in my hands, about, to most of them, about 30 inches or longer, about 29 inches wide and huge. Uh, next one's nitro, which is a different octane with a smaller engine. The gas one has a wheat whacker engine. So those ever seen a wheat whacker is about this big, that size of the engine. The 29 cc I've seen up to, I think, 50 something cc, so it's cubic inches. So with that being said, nitro is smaller, but also takes, I would say, gas or some kind of combination, methane and, and oil. And that's what you get a gas engine or nitro engine RC car. The third one is electric. Everybody knows electric, you plug it in and it plays. So I've been doing a lot of research here the last three to four weeks trying to find out what I want. Uh, I haven't been in this hobby since I was like 19, 19 since I was 14, 15. And back then it was totally different. More hobby stores, you actually went in there and you purchased a kit. The kit can be whatever you want. It can be from gas, nitro, or it can be uh, electric. The difference back then, you buy the kit, you can buy all the components. That means that I got to buy the steering wheel, um, servo, second turn. I got to buy a throttle server. I got to buy all these different things and the rent and put it together. So you're building it from your hands. Now, everything's RTR. Our acronym means ready to run. You put the gas in, put the nitro in, and or you put the electric batteries in, and you're off with the races. And now they got much bigger and cheaper and abundance to find. So thank God for YouTube because now... I'm going to get about, it's called the um, Desert Buggy 2.0. It's about 31 inches long, 29 inches wide. It's electric. The reason I have them with the gas or nitro is because with gas and nitro, you got to thing dangle with the gas. You got to tune the engine. You got to do all the stuff. Uh, with nitro, same thing. You got to buy the glow starter to ignite the glow plug. So that way it ignites the fuel so it can actually run. So with the electric, it's much more easier. But one caveat, I do not want to buy an electric car that is not upgradable. I want to make it bigger, I want to make it faster. Sorry, I can't make it bigger unless you buy a bigger chassis, but I can make it faster. I've been doing a lot of research with engines because engines back then were about this big. Mm -hmm. Now they're about this big for RC cars. And so you yeah, got figure out, so like I said, I'm upgraded, kits are no longer existing. Yes, I did find two kits that you can actually build, but the kit's like $650. The nitro engine is about another $300, plus you buy by the radio. And you had to build it. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I do it just yet. I, I, if I want to spend that much money, I should buy a gas one already ready with RTR. But electric is, I want to upgrade it. So most electric cars now, uh, but, um, if you want to, they can go up to, I saw one guy on YouTube up to 150 miles per hour on a straightaway. Wow. So, yes. Do you it put like a little little doll or stuffed animal in there to pretend it's the driver while you're I racing wish. this thing? Put the dog no, in they, there. You, you put your dog in there. The dog's like, what? <laughs> with the dog hanging out. And at that point, it won't go. So what they do is to do a speed test. You keep all the components roughly the same. Mm -hmm. So obviously, the smaller the chassis, the smaller the car. But you put a bigger motor and bigger batteries. That allows you to speed run. You got to make sure you have a spoiler in the front to keep it down, a spoiler in the back. Uh, mm -hmm. I see a lot of people do is they use a GoPro or to use a GPS speed run. It has someone with a video camera take that. But yeah, speed runs are huge nowadays. It wasn't my day. It was you're on a racetrack racing around circles. Right. Uh, okay, that's one thing. I love the bout when I was in California this past week. I'm back in Washington. I went to California for the weekend. I went to a place called NorCal Hobbies. Oh, my goodness. I missed the hobby stores. <laughs> everything I wanted, everything I dreamed of was all there. Um, because of COVID, the racetrack was outside. So the racing electric and nitro engines around the track. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to another one called Sheldon's. The Sheldon was, I would say, the better one because it's a larger scale hobby. So, you know, I'm talking about cars and I'm not talking about planes. I do have a plane here to my left. You can't see it there. That's electric plane. Mm -hmm. Some planes engine are this big. That's just the engine itself. The wingspan can be at six foot long. Uh, NorCal hobbies are only about cars, no planes. Sheldon's hobbies over Mapitas had cars planes and it had boats it had a fifth scale boat with an engine this big wow human yeah so these hobbies can get huge um if you go to youtube and uh, google uh, not google you search large scale hobbies you have some that there was this plane song there he actually had a jet engine it was seven thousand dollars for this plane wow so i mean seven you know, that that's gonna pay for my kids college education and then some yes. 
Oh my God. So that, that person had a lot of disposable income, but you gotta remember, it's not a kit. He found some diagram or made it himself. He actually built everything from scratch, use his own hands. So it probably took him 10 years, probably took him five years. And it's ironic, you see these videos, this guy took, let's say five years to build a plane. First test run, take off, boom, crashes. Actually one, this guy jump and shoot, woof, woof. All of a sudden <laughs> the wing breaks, goes right into the swamp. Oh my God. Wow. Well, yeah, there, there are ups and downs to building <laughs> wrong. But, but kudos to those people who can do it. My aunt and uncle uh, in Michigan actually built their own plane that they flew across country. I mean, they flew it around oh. for eight or nine years. I mean, they were really big into that. And then, of course, they both got older and their eyesight got worse and they couldn't get recertified. And yeah, but it was fun. But they had fun. They had a great That's time. Fun. Yeah. See, another hobby. They have a hobby. Another hobby. Yes. Yes. So, see, I love that we winged this a little bit because I got to kind of like duck off and go find my stuff. So, you ready? And just be more creative. We, we can wing it like this. It's like yeah. more creative. We talk about stuff, right? Things that yeah. people, us, me, and you care about. Not all about, you know, consciousness and all that. Let's just have a conversation. Let's just talk. Exactly. Exactly. I made this one, and I didn't do it very, very well, but it says, um, stay positive, work hard, make it happen. And I was kind I of getting that. fancy with it, but I made that before I went to IPEC. So before, because that's what we talk about a lot in IPEC and coaching mm -hmm. school. So I kind of like get crazy with the glitter. So I made some chargers for Christmas. Ooh. That you put, so I have two red and I have two silver. But my dining oh, wow. table, which is now my desk, is not that big. So I can only fit two on at a time, which is hilarious. Hold on. Is that made out of clay? Because it, it sounds no, kind of hard. Wood. Oh, wood. wood. Okay, okay. So what you do is you, you sand it, then you paint the background, whatever you want it to be, and they have a variety of colors. And then you put this uh, stencil on, and then you paint inside the stencil, then you peel the stencil off. And then, of course, I always get really, after the first one, I was like, oh, but I want to put glitter, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. And and they were like, but you don't know how to do that. And I, we, we've never done that before. I'm like, oh, just sit back and watch me. Don't know where these ideas come from. Because um, some of, and some of my best pieces I've, I've made to give to friends, but this was this is by far my pride and joy. I think this is the magical Easter pig. You ready? I'm ready. Let's see. Because see, the magical Easter pig has all sorts of different colors. I love that. The ham and the and the people always do monochrome, and I was like, no, I'm going to do a rainbow of colors. And she said, how do you do a rainbow of colors? I'm like, oh my god, you're the art teacher. Watch me. So they they offered me a job, but it wasn't very much money. So it would have been fun, but I needed to focus on other things. You know what? Watch you talk about your hobbies, what you're doing. That would be awesome if you can find a way to incorporate that into your coaching practice. You know, it would be fun, but it's a little bit messy. And it's a lot of, again, I was just kind of following directions. And when I followed directions, it kind of opened up this a whole other Mm -hmm. space that I didn't know that I had and I was like I was just kind of like off in the zone doing stuff and they were like how'd you do that I'm like I, I don't know so this is the last piece I'm going to show you let me see see what I mean by my glitter stuff but this was in my kitchen being you know the chef so I have you know the different tools there. oh cool Go roll um, I like that the whisk you can okay. see that and so then the big I cakes have and then I have the spatula, but what you can't see because it's not, let's see if I can move this a little bit, but I kind of did the colors, you might be able to see it better this way, because how do they line up? So I've got the white to the blue to the pink, to the pink to the white, and then a little bit of pink, and, the, and then the, oh, and then the white to here, and then back to the pink. So it kind of goes in a circle like that. If you can see that. I can see like so I can, I'm what I'm seeing coming through right now the camera is your artsy side. You love painting work with your hands. But what's funny is that this kind of like came out of me. I have no idea where it came from. And they were like, I hate to say it's always, it's always it's always been there. It just it's always been inside you. Yeah, it was kind of freaky. And it was only three glasses of wine too. So that was it. <laughs> And help bring bring pick inside help. of you out, right? It exactly, helped. exactly. That stuff is so cool, and it's it's that that's the whole point about the hobby is for those listeners out there is that 
see how she did something that, oh, I, I go follow some instructions, it's great. But next thing you know, it just opened up a different layer, I call of the onion, like we learned an IPEC, a yeah, different layer of the onion for yourself you didn't know you had. You asked to do that, it's like paint night. And I don't think I would like paint night, I would do it, just be something cool. But for me, the reason I like the RC car hobby because I get to be working with my hands mm-hmm. and I'm immersing a task and I'm by myself. So my mind's free of any thoughts and I'm just focusing on what I'm doing. And the beautiful thing about that is I get to drive it after I'm all said and done. And well, after that, you paint, you, know, you get to hang too. it up. That's true too. Unlike these things, which currently, because I had to restructure uh, things, they're all, I had to pull them out of a closet, but um, mm-hmm. it was, it, this stuff was getting too cluttered and I was kind of freaking out about the clutter, but um, you have something that you can show and that you can use. Whereas, yeah. you know, I, I've done probably about eight or nine projects at Board and Brush that I've specifically made for people for Christmas or for their birthday. Wow. Um, I made one hanging thing that was all about um, coffee and they have, they have little sayings. So it was about coffee in the morning, it had four hooks underneath for the, for the coffee mugs. And so I didn't do them straight in the line. I kind of did them in a U shape and I had all sorts of red glitter and it was, it was just really cool. It was, it was, but I gave that one, that one away because that was my, for my girlfriend's birthday. Yeah. Awesome. But see, look how, look how excited you get when you talk about that and what you're doing. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. And you know, next time you come to California, if these places are open, I'll take you to a painting night because you get a little direction, then you get time to go do your own thing. And then a little direction, little alcohol, get to do your own thing. Okay. I'm, I'm down for it. I'm yeah. down. Yeah. But my new hobby, here's my, here's my new uh, hobby though. With the Giants, they always do every year. Um, it's called the Great Giant Race. And it's it's usually at the ballpark. And they'll first do um, a, a marathon, a half marathon, 10K, and then a 5K. And everything winds up in the ballpark. And I got to uh, volunteer at it last year, which was a whole lot of fun. And Lucille's in the middle. And there's all sorts of you know, food and bobbleheads and all sorts of cool stuff. And if you run all four events, which some people do, totally not, not my style. Um, and you get a medal for each one. And then you get the Lucille because you've done the Grand Slam, blah, blah, blah. Well, what they did this year, what they're doing this year is they're doing a, um, a series of fun runs. So Ooh. they're doing um, challenge one of 12. So okay. I signed up and I paid, you know, the $300 for it. And so every month they, you get a pin and you get a bib and then you take your 5K or 10K walk or however length that you signed up for. And then you just take a picture and throw it up in Instagram. That's been creative. So pretty much you, you select where you want to go in yep. the United States or the world. It has to be a certain amount of miles or how does it work? Well, I signed up for the 5K because Coco and I, the dog and I do 5K every day and twice a week we do a 10K. Okay. So... Tomorrow, I was going to do it today, but, you know, life kind of got in the way. So tomorrow on her jacket, she will have the race bib. And depending on, I want to take the route where we go up to the top of the hill that looks over Walnut Creek, Mount Diablo, all that. And I'm just going to take a selfie, her and I, click, boom, here we are doing our daily 10K or 5K. And then you just throw it up on the Giants Instagram. And then next month, they'll send me another bib and another pin. And we'll, because we do this every day. Don't forget to throw it up your, your Instagram. You got to celebrate that. Your Instagram. Instagram too. Yeah. Because you're Grand Slam. So you're slamming these caves at the park. Okay? Exactly. Come on, don't forget slamming about that. Caves every day, baby. So I'll put it on their Instagram. I'll put it on my Instagram. But I mean, we, I, I kid you not, Ron. We do this every day. So. So you should be doing 100K by this point. You should do like a Forrest Gump, right? To go across the United States back and forth with Coco. <laughs> Absolutely. What's going on, man? We're doing it. We have our various gas stations where we know we can turn on the tap. She gets a drink of water and yeah. all that other stuff. But um, you got you got to have the guy marked on the gas station gets gets the treats. You know, you get the little water turned to make you use the bathroom. This one's better snacks than that one or whatever, right? Oh my God! It, we first we first we go down the Iron Horse Trail, then we and she yeah. does her business, and then we pop up at Safeway, and we use the put the poop bag in the trash can, use this hand sanitizers. Then we go in the one door, cut across the lobby. She says hello to everybody. Oh, and my dog Coco was customer of the week this week at Starbucks inside. Thank you Ooh, very much. Ooh, awesome. And, and every couple of weeks I let her get the puppuccino. Then we go outside, eats puppuccino. She eats the puppuccino, which is just whipped cream in a cup and it's free. And then we go 
down to the high school Monday through Friday, pick up the breakfast and lunch for my son. And then from there, it depends on where our route goes. But then, um, and she'll, she knows when it's the weekend because she'll be like, there's pizza that way. And she loves going outside the cheesesteak factory where drunk people do foolish things like throw <laughs> their stuff all into the bushes. And she goes and takes her job very seriously about being the night crew and eating all the bread rolls and pizza crusts and all the other French fries oh. and things designs. So basically, guys, says, oh, I want the crust and throws it away. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why we have to walk a lot to keep her girlish figure. But please stop throwing your garbage. Use your plate. Yeah. We well, have a pandemic. This, on, uh -huh. this private garbage can somewhere around, they couldn't walk 100 feet just to throw it away. So that way it's not on the ground and blowing uh, around. Some of it is right next to the garbage can. There's a little, there's a little strip that's a block long. You can swing a cat from one end to the other where they have the Cheesecake Factory, Ike and Mike's, Buckhorn Grill, across the street is Chipotle, and can't remember, oh, the Pokey, the Pokey Bowl place, and there's like seven trash cans, and a couple will be overflowing, and the rest people like literally sit, eat on the bench, leave their thing there, and don't even go the extra, there's the waste basket, and then here comes along my dog to go, and who, who wants to go and pick it all up? And, and eat it. So I will fight her for the aluminum foil. I'll fight her for the plastic. I'll fight her for the you know everything else. But don't get between her and a piece of pizza. That's why I do not miss California. So we come we come down to Washington, right? So he kind of goes down past San Francisco and whips around and lines mm -hmm. up at San Jose Airport. And as we get lower to the ground, I can see more of the ground, right? Homes encampments trash, dilapidated buildings. I just, it's beyond me. California is one of the wealthiest states out there. I don't know about it now. They have a lot of tech, a lot of money in California. I mean, I went to Santana Row and people driving a Lamborghini, right? Yeah. During the pandemic. Gun his engine. Or got his heart. And it's beyond me that no one's trying to get the homeless place to stay or clean up our environment. And here it is, a trash can, it's a few feet away. Guy says, oh, I don't care. Someone else's problem. Throws it on the ground. Mm -hmm. Dude, you live in it. You're going to shit in it too? Don't this eat any shit. This don't. is why we have a pandemic. Because people are, and it was, okay, but we're getting, we need to get back to happy and back to the topics. So let's talk about how Ron bounced into these stores last weekend and of course the salespeople probably saw him coming like oh my god this guy's gonna spend it done and you were probably so happy like the little boy inside of you that is coming I out was. talking about it so what did you buy what did you how much did you spend what'd you buy <gasps> zero wow that must have taken I, a lot of self-control it was actually very easy first of all your suitcase is only yay big and the rc car is yay big right it's above on the screen side. it's called free shipping what are you doing exactly <laughs> that's why i'm gonna go to a place called a man or a mon hobbies or whatever a main hobbies whatever i'm gonna go there and order because they do free shipping there you have to get this rc car in a box try to fit in your suitcase but what allowed me to do which i really enjoy is what's out there now Best thing about these local hobby shops are not franchised or owned by a corporation. So mm -hmm. their Sheldon's is mom and pop. There's not no more than one Sheldon's hobbies. Norca Hobbies is the only one Norca Hobby. You get to actually interchange and talk with people. So I met this guy at NorCal. I must have spent 20 minutes talking because I said, hey, because first of all, it's a humongous building. But because of COVID, social distancing, they have a small retail shop inside a big building. Mm -hmm. So as I got to the building, um, you have to wait in line, right? So, I mean, mm -hmm. the shop is small. And what they did is they took the other side of the building where the indoor racetrack used to be. They kind of stacked up each initial kit together. It's like the Traxxas brand, the Locy's brand, and they had the one-fifth scale brand all kind of together. So mm -hmm. I was waiting in line. The guy comes up and says, hey, we're looking for Well, I'm saying, I'm not from here. You know, that's my suit you guys got in stock. And, and he says, boy, what are you looking at? So I'm looking at this desert buggy. You know, oh, man, I had that buggy. So he started talking about the batteries you need. He's talking about the charge you need. He has it, showing pictures of what he had. And he says, look, let me tell you about this. I says, no, I was going to look at the X-Max tracks. He says, you know what? That's a piece of crap. That's what he said. Because, and obviously I did all YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. It's basically they gave a cheap, cheap parted car, so cheap parts, 
Mm -hmm. a lot of power, so it's going to break. That's yeah. what it was, right? So that's, it can do wheelies, it can do all this crazy stuff. So let's tell you about the, the, the Losi one. It's a great car and really well made. Mm -hmm. And that right there solidified the fact of what I'm going to buy. So then I'm so I do my research. Where can I find? How much does it cost? Can I buy it used? Can I buy any upgrades? Can I have someone upgrade the car? I found Kitty Candy Store. Then I went to Sheldon's and I saw this guy called Smith Studio Hobbies uh, down, I don't know where he's from, but on YouTube. And he had this humongous four foot long remote control boat. Wow. And I saw it on YouTube. And I saw it in person. And it's like, I'm less than a quarter mile down from the lake, which is that way. And I said to myself, man, I got to get a remote control boat. They didn't have all the boats I needed. They, uh, RC cars, they didn't have the, the desert buggy like the NorCal did. They had my other one I want, which is the biggest one, the low C one-fifth scale gas. They had that there, new and used. Wow. Like I, said, I want to start with, so they had both. They had one use, it's like a thousand. New is like 1400 plus tax. You buy, buy some more parts with that. So they had, it's like, this is awesome. So I felt Kitty Candy Store just going around in circles, looking at the stuff up and down aisles. Oh, I seen this one. I seen that one. I want to buy that one. Can I make it a mental shopping list? Things I want to buy over the next couple, couple of years. And he says, man, I can't wait to get back in this hobby. I can't wait to get back into it. I love this so much. And now being watching a lot of space, if you buy these humongous RC car, you're not stuck with, oh, I don't know where to drive it. I can take it up. I go hiking outside my front yard. It's a whole huge straightaway. Mm -hmm. I can take it down to the thing called Lake Wacom. Huge park. Drive it somewhere. Obviously, you make sure you don't get hit. Because this car is kind of like 30 pounds of batteries. So if right. you hit something with that, it's going to be hurt. Okay? So it's going to be yeah, a huge sure problem. <laughs> yep. Sorry, that word has been floating around in my head for like six That's days, okay. and I needed to get it out, and I finally found a sentence in the right context to use the word. I love it. It finally got it to come out. <laughs> exactly. So, Imagine what I'd be like on alcohol. I mean, this. Could be, <laughs> we're not going there, though. None of this thing. Not today. No, not today. But I will say, Ron, I'm really proud of you for picking the electric version and not the gas or nitro version of this, A, because of taking care of our environment and B, because you know that if I showed up and I wanted to play with it, I'd cause an explosion. <laughs> so, <laughs> so safety first. Yay. Yay. We got that. And good That's for you. Let me, let me do it first and see if I blow it up. It's okay. If you do it, it's like, okay, Hey, you got to pay for the RC car. So let me try it first experiment. Exactly. But good. And good for you for supporting small local business. We like that too. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we have a local hobby store here in Bellingham, but it's, it's called Hobby Town. It's one of those uh, big franchise. Mm -hmm. And usually happens when it's franchise, they only go with certain brands, which yes. is for them. They only go with the Traxxas brands, a lot of Traxxas stuff there. And it's a smaller town, so they're not going to have the abundance of, you know, one-fifth scales, gas power. They don't even have nitro. It's all electric. Right. Because there's no one wants it. Well, with the small local hot mom and pops, they everything you need because there's a demand there for that so I, that's what i liked about it yeah so awesome maybe, Man, maybe, I, your, I maybe your buddy this. down at norcal might throw in free shipping since he's giving you the skinny on which one to buy you never know you know what i'm, I'm i asked him to do you ship because yes we do drop shipping all the time so i just gotta pick up the phone says hey i want this bucky i need these batteries can you ship it to me because i would love to support the local hobby store versus mm -hmm. a big corporation online uh, just, I'm a small business owner, you're a small business owner, and it's all about a community and you support that community, lots and support their families, which is more important to my heart than mm -hmm. anything else. So I might call them up or make another trip down there and bring an empty suitcase. Or Ooh. say, hey, look, I'm not from here. I want to buy all this stuff. You guys ship. Yep. Of course, next time maybe you could drive down instead of flying down. Uh, drive down need about eight days off because it's uh thou over a thousand miles actually mm -hmm. way more a thousand miles and it's about fifteen hour drive so I don't want to drive down there extremely exhausted I'd rather take my time so usually if I'm gonna drive back down which I might do this summer mm -hmm. go from here to Oregon stay there at night uh which is um then go to Met at the Oregon go to Medford 
the Mefro down to uh, San Jose. So I might do that this summer. We'll see. Okay. Well, you have to. We have to meet in the middle though, because I owe you a cup of coffee since I lost that bet for Super Bowl. Oh yes, I forgot. Yes, that. I am very. I'm don't welch on my bets. I owe you a cup of coffee, and we're not talking about Super Bowl. We're just not. <laughs> <laughs> Blowout. It, well, well, yeah, it was. I mean, tell you this: we can get a cup of coffee and go to the local hobby store in Walnut Creek. There's probably one there, and we can sit and hang out. We'll think about that. Actually, there's one in Concord, right where my uh, my last small business used to be. So Ooh, there, there's what's it called? I don't know, but they had Thomas the Train in the front window. That's all I knew, <laughs> and it was pretty big. I'm Google it. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you go Google it. Concord, California, hobby store. Uh, it's on um, Arnold Industrial Way or Industrial Drive. One of those I'll be two. looking it up. I I'll know look it up and we'll make that appointment. Yep. Yep. But look, my friend, I got to skate because I got to go to work. Look, I'm in my little Safeway Doug drive. No, you got to pop the collar too. Don't forget to pop the collar and just show yeah. it up so you don't kill it today. No, this so is the, this is the lucky last. I haven't done laundry and I have to do some tomorrow morning before my three o'clock shift. Um, this is the I hate wearing a t shirt and I have no other clean clothes for work. So there you go. Oh. <laughs> and it makes sense <laughs> and it makes sense you know so um so yeah but hey guys i hope everybody out there find your hobby find your spark get your little get your faces and energy going and and all that other stuff and just enjoy doing what you do best and and find that energy and feed it in the stuff that you have to do that's what i'm gonna do that's what i'm gonna do so thank you for listening to episode six he said, she Yay. said, and discussing a hobby. So, Denise, get to work. And for you guys, I will see you guys on social media. And thanks for listening. My name is Ronald Johnson. And what I do is I help people get tired of who they are and where they are in life. And, Denise, have a Grand Slam day. Have a Grand Slam day. Yes, I'm Denise Lewis, GrandSlamCoaching.com. I can help you be the best you that you can be. And Ron, it's always, it's a pleasure as always. And once more, you've opened up a little bit more of your heart to me and to, to all of our listeners. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. I'll see you guys <laughs> later. Thanks for listening. Bye. Have